What's up, guys? Derek, more plates, more dates.com. I'm going to talk quickly about how I plan to bring up my chronically low HDL levels. So, guys on TRT, you know, it's super common for guys on TRT to have really bad HDL levels. And anyone on exogenous androgens, regardless if it's even if it's SARMs, if it's gear, if it's pro hormones, whatever it is, your lipids are going to get skewed. And the biggest thing that takes a hit typically is your HDL. And oftentimes it goes completely neglected and they, for some reason, just decide I'm going to leave it low because I can't get it up and it's fine. As long as my LDL is low enough, then I'm good. It's not the case. You need your HDL high and in at least in the reference range, like there's guys walking around with single digit uh, HDL levels and just, you know, not caring. And you got to get that up. So when I had a 31 on my last test, which I believe the reference range starts at 39, which is, it's like the one health marker that I've always struggled to get on point. After doing a bit more research, I've come to kind of like a protocol designed for boosting HDL specifically. And it's kind of an extreme protocol. Like I don't advise doing it or anything. I'm just, you know, logging essentially what, I'm going to be doing and then I'll keep you guys posted on how it goes for me. But basically what I'm doing is obviously you guys know I'm a proponent of EPA, DHA, high dose omega threes. What I'm doing is I've talked about krill oil briefly before, but krill oil is far superior to omega threes for boosting HDL. If you look at the clinical data, it's uh, far more efficacious for boosting your HDL. So I'm going to be having three grams of krill oil per day and reducing my omega three intake um, a bit to kind of, you know, offset that extra EPA and DHA I'll be getting from the krill oil. In addition to that, I'm having 1.5 grams of niacin per day. And specifically the uh, nicotinic acid, I believe. I forget which one it is, but there's a very specific one you want that gives you like the really intense flush. Like that's the one you want. You don't want to get the uh, insolitol or whatever i don't remember what it's called but the there's a very specific one you want to get and i'll put a picture of it up in uh the corner here for you guys to reference i'll put in the video description too but anyways that's uh i'm having 1.5 grams of that per day that's not something that's sustainable though you have to keep in mind because that's several hundred percent higher than the recommended daily intake and that's not you know a sustainable practice that you can use long term so the goal of this whole thing is to boost my HDL high enough and then sustain it ideally long term with the krill oil, ideally. But we'll see how that goes. And then in addition to that, probably the most interesting part of it is 10 milligrams of carterine per day. So I haven't released my comprehensive overview of carterine, but I have my article from like 2016 or whatever is up with updated with every notable clinical trial conducted on humans, conducted on rats, goes over the cancer data, goes over everything you would want to know about carterine. I'm not afraid to say it's the most comprehensive article on the entire internet about carterine. So if you haven't checked it out, you should, you know, I advise you can, you can just wait for my video and I'm just going to like pretty much read off of it. But the data is sound on it, I believe. You know, I obviously don't recommend using it. It's not an approved uh, supplement or compound for improving your HDL levels. But that's one of the things that it was designed to do. That it was uh, given to patients with chronically low HDL to see how much it would boost their HDL. And it did very, very well. And it has anecdotally has a low side effect profile in the clinical data. It has a low side effect profile in humans. Not in that one rat model. But obviously, you know, you probably know what I'm talking about here. You know, by no means is this me encouraging you to go, you know, use it or look into it or anything like that. And I wouldn't use it either if it wasn't like a dire need. Like I don't think cardarine is a miracle by any means. I think it's very good at what it's intended to do, which one of those things is boosting HDL based on the data and based on anecdotal findings. It's not a sustainable thing. Again, I'm not going to be on it for a long time. I'm just using it to boost my HDL. Ideally, I wanna see how high I can get it. And then I wanna see how high I can sustain it with something that's a more sustainable you know intervention method like krill oil so again three grams of krill oil i'm going to be doing 1.5 grams of niacin and then 10 milligrams of 
uh, cartering per day. And I'm going to go get my blood drawn. I'll keep you guys posted on how that goes and uh, hoping for the best because, you know, it's not something you can leave for the rest of your life. Having chronically low HDL, it's going to screw you up eventually. So definitely get that addressed. If you have a similar issue, I highly advise you look into boosting your HDL as well. However you want to go about that. I'm getting so off track here. But anyways, that's my plan. I'll keep you guys posted. I'm hoping for the best. I'll talk to you guys soon.